mass, massive interview by John Texter. Absolutely big. He spoke to the Athletic and he dropped some very, very interesting information. So we'll be discussing all of that. We're going to go through the quotes where he spoke about Palace. He spoke a lot in the Athletic interview, but there was towards the end he spoke about Palace. So we're going to cover that and go through the quotes and more. Let's get started with this because this is very big people. What's going on, people? Welcome to Live Palace News. Today is going to be a bit different. It's not going to be your typical transfer updates, even though maybe towards the end, if we do have a bit of time, we might be able to talk about it. But I'm joined by Patrick to discuss John Texter. I said it before. I think I said it maybe yesterday, crazy enough, that we need an interview. We need to know what's going on. And John Texter dropped some bombs. He wasn't light in this interview. He spoke to the Athletic and he dropped some very, very important information about his future at the club, about, you know, not just that and how he got involved with Palace and how he sees Harris, Blitzer, Blitzer and Parrish. These are quotes directly for him, from him. And I'll be honest, it's, you can see the divide. You can see the divide. And he even thinks that as well. But look, we'll be discussing that. And more as always, if you are watching on replay, make sure to leave down your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you do enjoy the content and you're new here, make sure to hit, to hit the like button and subscribe to not miss out on future Palace content. Patrick, you're over and back from Chicago. Before we do yeah, get man. started, go on, give us some positives. How was that, man? First, I want to just thank every Palace fan that was at, in Chicago. Uh, shout out to you, D. A lot of a lot of fans, more than you'd even realize, were saying how much they really enjoyed the show. But a shout out to Carlton I met. Um, he's uh lives in Chicago now, but he's originally from uh from London, big Palace fan. He watches the show. But it was it was really great. I mean, I had some good mates that I um that I normally hang out with like when I go away who were there, Will. Uh, but I also saw a couple of back and S people or former uh Tom Fancy, producer was there, and Ben Nagel, who now works for Daily Mail doing something over here in America. Both live in America now. We're there, but it was fun. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Chicago. By the way, I've never been before. It's a great town, great food, uh, great tourism. Uh, enjoyed the Palace match, even though we lost. I still enjoyed just being there. Got to go to a baseball game yesterday with my wife, so it was really enjoyable. I'm, I'm actually really exhausted, but I have vlogged it, people, and hopefully D will get a chance to put it out there for you guys. I mean, you don't have to watch it, obviously, but if you do get, it, if you do enjoy it. Give it a thumbs up. But I again, I had a great time. It was great to see the Palace fan. But again, well, even whoever I saw yeah. out there, uh, shout out to all of you. Appreciate your support. Yeah, thanks to everyone who's been supporting us. I've said it many times, even in UK, abroad, we're everywhere. South, South Africa, Australia, as always, you know, without you guys, we're, there's there's no channel because there's no one to talk to. So thanks to every single one of you. And, you know, your, all your likes, all your comments, all you guys tuning in, it helps us massively. Uh, so as I always say, thank you to every single one of you. Uh, Patrick. I did not expect this bomb today. John Texter. Bomb. That's what I want to call it. I, it, it. Look, I'm not even... Maybe maybe I'm overhyping it, but genuinely, he just said what was on his chest. That's what it yeah. feels like. He spoke about his other clubs. He spoke about a multi-club model. And I was going to pick out some quotes, but I don't think it's fair to pick out quotes. You know, right before I just decided, you know what, we're going to go through it all. And not just all in terms of, you know, what's happening over in Brazil and Leon, because... We, won't, we don't have three hours <laughs> to talk about everything. We're going to talk about what he spoke about Palace. And it's very interesting. You know, we're going to, you guys will see it from his quotes. But he's saying, he essentially admitted is a huge mistake. Are we, you know, some of the mistakes he, he made going into Palace and with Steve Parrish and some of the role that, you know, he's given him. So it's, it's very interesting. Um, but before we do get started, Patrick, what's your feeling? Because you read the article as well. What's your feelings? What can we expect from this? Um, from these quotes, surely you you expect a response from someone at the club, right? Because it was well, quite well, big. Like, well, like you, did, I wanted someone to speak, and I'm glad it was Texter who came out first. Um, as people know, and uh, you know, it's my opinion. I never had a problem with Texter. I like the approach. I actually, having read the article, I love the he explained the approach, and it was different than I really expected him to explain it. How he how he sees it. We talk about the players. We're gonna, you're going to get to talk about the how it's about the players first, and then the fans, which I found interesting. But just overall. Um, there were a lot of a lot of anti texter people, and you can still be that way. But if you get a chance to read the article, and again, shout out to Stan who put it in chat so I could read it on the on the plane. I read it twice on the way from Chicago back home to New York. Um, it's a very enlightening article. Um, people are gonna have their 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 points, but again, 
when DB did it out. But I'm saying right now, whereas in the past I was, you know, everybody knows I'm kind of being anti. I'm not anti anybody anymore. I am just really resolved to the fact that our club is not going to go anywhere. We're not going to progress. It's very clear because we have owners who are clearly at odds with each other, three versus one, and you'll get that from your article, people. But more importantly, you just know that the goals of the owners, are, they're not on the same page. And that yeah, never works in fit. anything. Yeah. It, it, it's never going to work. And you I remember, D, you've always speculated about that. You know, I want to hear from the owners, you know, what's going on. But now you're going to find, I guarantee you, that Paris is going to come out and say something and, or do something. It's going, to, it's going to happen, definitely. He has to have a reply now because yeah. Tex was very, very honest. Very yeah, honest about very how he honest. feels about things. So now Parrish has to, he doesn't have to reply, because you know, but right now, um, having heard what Tex has said again, I, I'm just calm, man. I'm, I'm not going to get upset about this season because it's not, I don't think it's going to go very well. And I just know that this article is a bombshell. It's, it's a bombshell. So, yeah. So, um, look, if you guys want to read the article for yourself, the link is in the description. It is from The Athletic. They do great work. So make sure to check out The Athletic um, for, for further Palace content. Uh, Matt Wisdom has his work there as well. But this article was actually from Matt Slater. So it wasn't from Wisdom. It was an interview. It seemed like it was a one-on-one. -on -one, and these quotes are directly from John Texter. As I said, there's a lot of things that he spoke about, but we're going to cover the Palace section of the interview. And, um, yeah, look... I, I, there's no point in wasting time. Let's just get started. Um, it is quite long, so we'll go through each section and each of his responses. But, you know, in terms of Palace, in the, the Athletic basically asked, you bought your first um, stake in Crystal Palace in 2021. You've been very busy since then. Um, is it fair to say that? And this is what Texas said, the following. He said, yes, but it's for the reason I mentioned. So he talked about it earlier. Um, I was first invited to buy a majority stake at Palace, but I decided to buy less than half because I was trying to conserve personal capital to buy Portuguese club Benfica. So that's why John Texter didn't buy a majority stake. Um, these are coming directly from John Texter. And that's how we got the name Eagle Football, the Eagle of Benfica and Crystal Palace. So my capital came in at Palace and it paid off a bunch of shareholder notes. People got money off the table and it helped finish some of what Steve Parrish was doing at the academy, which is a great project. The capital also helped to reduce the average age of the team as well. But after those initial successes, it soon became clear that nobody wanted to sell any more shares. This is to John Texter. The shareholders at Palace loved that club I know some of the fans on social media think other, otherwise, but it's true. I'm at a limit as to what I can buy. I'm at 46%, but I vote as one-fourth of the board. I joined a partnership of three guys who are very close to each other. And while they would disagree with this, it's, if it's anything controversial, the votes are three against one. That is quite significant. John Texer essentially hinting that... Is Harris, Blitzer, Parrish against Texter. Um, which, uh, Patrick, I don't know about you, but this is one section of the quote. But I don't know about you, but it kind of doesn't surprise me because if you remember from the overlap interview, Steve Parrish, he 100%, he I'm not sure, he 100% dropped Harris and Blitzer as like a name drop, but I didn't hear Texter there. So it seemed like Harris and Blitzer and Parrish are basically on the same wavelength, but John Texter ain't. What do you make of them comments from John Texas saying it's, you know, it's three votes against one? Essentially, there's four people there, but he's he's by himself and it's, it's, it's him against the rest. Well, it's something I think we all speculate on. These people, you know, people who have followed the show and, and we've talked about a lot of times. I think we've always kind of known that. Again, that interview that Parrish did on the, um, with uh, uh, blah, 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 Neville, Gary Neville, basically said that same thing exactly, you know, that, Harris and I, want Harris and Josh and I, are on the same page, and and uh, Blitzer also Dave Blitzer, sorry, and yeah. um, it was obviously it was three against one. So the fact that, he, but the fact that the interesting part is that he actually he, he made a point to make if you were speculating about it, you weren't sure about it, Texas telling you no on any on any controversial. By the way, that goes to Vieira's firing. By the way, because I the the, uh, the word out was that Texas wanted to keep him, and obviously. Parish wanted the majority about didn't, yeah. Parish wanted, right? Which again, which is fine, but that just it makes that crystal clear that you know that it's three versus one. Every everything that happens, and again, we're not talking about trans, we're talking about just anything in general. It's it's three versus one. So basically, whatever Parish wants and Texter and uh, and Harrison Blitzer want gets done. Yeah, but it seemed like Parish and Harrison Blitzer, if he's essentially saying it's three against one, it seemed like 
those three are on the same same wavelength in comparison to John Texar, who clearly has you know different views about how. No, I understand that, but my point is well. When you say Parish, Harris, and Blitz, you're saying Harish and Texa, Harish and Blitz, sorry. You're saying Parish because whatever Parish wants, he can. Yeah, that's why. Right, yeah, so that's what it seems. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Is, again, is, uh, yeah, so, so, in a, in a follow up to that, the Athletic, this these ain't quotes, but Athletic put it in in brackets that sources close to Palace who asked to remain anonymous to protect relationships say that Eagles football holding is around hold is around forty five percent, and that other shareholders will soon be injecting cash as a part of capital raise, which will dilute their holding. So. Right now, it seems like there's, you know, in terms of shares, it's 45% uh, rather than the 40% that, that John Texer came in with. And there was a follow-up to that. The Athletic asked the question, you came in at 40%, how have you increased it? He said the following, by adding more capital, I put in £30 million in the first quarter of this year, which uh, brings up to the financial video that me and Tim spoke about in the accounts there. We saw that in January, there was that £30 million injection. That's from John Texa, which has increased his shares to around 45% to 46% um, at Crystal Palace from the initial 40%. So, yes, John Texa did put in £30 million in January. And as a result, his shares has increased, um, which is also interesting. Now, there's much more to this, people. Um, the Athletic, follow -up, following up to that, also asked the following. And the other shareholders, including Steve Parrish, have been diluted. Um, and Texas said the following. Yeah, a small bit. Everyone is when someone puts in some capital, but people are proposing new investments all the time, particularly around the new stand, which is the main talking point, right? The new main stand, money, 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 money. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, he, he also said the following. Um, if I'm asked to put in more capital, we would, but there's not really an opportunity to get more involved in the stuff that's really fun for me. The academy, squad construction, the commercial elements. So I read that again. If I'm asked to put in more capital, we would. But Texa, these are Texas words, not mine. But he's saying there's not really an opportunity for me to get more involved in the stuff that's fun for Texa. And that's with the academy, the, short, the squad construction, the commercial elements. And he followed up by saying the club is run by Steve, which is what we all know, and a terrific sporting director in Dougie Friedman. So massive praise to Dougie there. And they're not really listening to me on players. Now, Patrick, what do you make of him saying that they're not really listening to me on players? Surely the sporting director is the main man that should be, you know, targeting players. So I'm a bit confused on what he really expects in terms of listening to him on players. Is it a case of spending the money? Like, it's very hard to understand what he wants to do. Like, has he got particular players that he wants? How does John Texter recruit players? Like, that's a bit confusing right. himself because he's only I just got recently involved with football. I can only speculate because I don't know. But I know that... Um... He's more involved, obviously, in picking the players and sending players in Botafogo and Lyon. For instance, he let that a player from Botafogo, Jafinho, which you mentioned in the article, by the way, earlier, go to Lyon. And Botafogo fans were upset, but he said he did it for the player. The player was 23 years old, so he had to move the player on because it was better for the player to make more money and get exposure in Europe, obviously, Champions League potential with Lyon, etc. So I just think that he's probably saying that he'd like to be involved in maybe using the recruitment that he has at Botafogo or Lyon to get players, not, not talking about their players, but maybe players in Europe or in Brazil. And Parrish and Dougie are basically saying, or whoever is saying, you know what, no, we're good. Uh, Dougie picked the players and, you know, we got fine. Because I can't think of any other reason why I mentioned that. Because I, he obviously wants to get involved in player recruitment. Because he puts money into the club. Because that money he used was used, the 30, the, some of the money was used to get Ahamada and Lakonga in, in January, in January yeah. right? So yeah. maybe he's saying, again, I'm only speculating, maybe he wanted to get more involved in it. And they're just saying, nah, nah. Dougie will do that, and then when Dougie brings someone, me and Steve will say, but yeah, that's, I that, I It's know. a bit interesting, of course. I don't think the interviewer, you know, went into depth about what we... Because, no. of course, as Palace fans, we know more than probably uh, Matt Slater, even though he's a very knowledgeable journalist. But, you know, I would have asked a question about, for example, Franca. Um, that is a link that we've heard that John Texa is trying to get involved with as well. So if he's saying all of those things, then... How comes he is getting involved with Franco? Does he want to get more involved than he is right now? Is that the case? Because it seems like there is some type of communication between him and Dougie, and he does rate Dougie as well because of the Franco deal. So that is, it hasn't friends, happened yet, but from that connection. Exactly, and, that, and that's my thing. If it doesn't get over the line, is it because they don't want to do it because he brought it to the table? Do you know, I don't know. I'm just, I, get, I'm, I don't know. That's a great point. Maybe Franco is a text idea, and they're just saying, you know what, we're not interested in, in Franco, which is why it hasn't gotten done. I don't know. 
So I didn't know that, by the way. You, that's new to me. I thought that Dougie had found Frank. You're telling me that Texter found Frank? I didn't even know that. Well, I saw so that there was, was one point saying. about John Texter wants like to progress is still over. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, if, I didn't know I don't that. Know if okay. there's a link. I don't know if he's trying to get... But then again, these them quotes, well, we don't know if, if it was true about John Texter wanting to get involved in a Franco deal because we don't yeah, know. Yeah, is it just because he owned the, the, yeah. the Brazilian exactly, side? Yeah. Well, saying, I'm yeah, assuming exactly, yeah, over in Brazil, he has connections, so maybe he wants to get a deal done. That's what the quotes were saying. That This was a... A while ago now, anyways. Oh, okay. Um, but but yeah, look, hey, look, there's there's more to it, people. So let's 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 crack on. Um, so the athletic asked because based on what he said, is there a divorce coming? Um, to John Tex, and he said the following: Strangely, even with the difficulty around the creation of Eagle Football and the consents I needed to do that from Palace's other main shareholders, Parish, Harris, and Blitzer, Steve and I talk two or three times a week. It's quite civil. We get along. It's fun. We have a spirit. We have a spiritual divide on the merits of a multi-club collab uh, collaboration versus single club governance. But there's no amount on uh, there's no amount of fighting with him that's going to benefit that discussion. So we don't fight. Interesting. So it seemed like with a multi-club model versus single club, there seemed like there's a disagreement there. But John Texer doesn't really want to fight it out with Steve Parish. Um, and what makes it ever more so interesting is that if you remember, there was a banner. Uh, from the HF uh, when the, you know, not with the multi-club model, but when, you know, there was reports about Texas, Palace. Texas, yes, going, SPAC, going, yeah, going public, getting, right, right. yeah, going public. Um, so, I mean, with the multi-club model, Patrick, Man City have done it. Um, I think they're probably one of the first to do it because Man City have been doing it for a long time. Recently, it's become a, right. it's become a trend. Yep. Where do you stand with it? Where do you stand with it? It seems like Parish is anti-multi-club model. I, I, I guess it depends on how you use it, right? I have mentioned it many times on the show. I'm a massive fan of it. I think it's a great idea to have a club in South America, in Asia, in Europe, and then be able to send players out there for development, have their play, best players come to your club, etc. So from Texas standpoint, I get it. Texas is the one who owns Botafogo, Molenbeek, Lyon, and Palace, right? But mm. Parish only owns Palace. So I have no I, I have no I have no problem that Parish doesn't like it. The funny part is is that Harris and Bliss also own multi clubs. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. How do they feel? Oh, yeah. They yeah, both yeah, you're right. the club. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I understand yes, why people right, like right, it. You're right. You're right. You know, it makes sense. Even, so, even yeah. me, like when you said it like that, yeah, you are right. We don't really talk about it, but yeah. <laughs> we don't. Yeah. They, yeah. they have multi club. But yeah, I don't so. think they're multi. I don't think they're in a multi club model. Like their own other clubs, but it doesn't seem like interconnected as it is with no, the I, Palace. Am I right? It's saying not. That with Harris it's, and it's not funny because, but I don't know if you know, but the team that. Blitzer owns is the one that Marlon B, I believe, beat last year to relegation to the prim back to the Belgium League. Seriously, it's and I'm not sure. Rivalry remember, going on. Right, exactly. But I'm not sure. I can't remember who Harris owns. I think he owns, doesn't he own a, another club? I don't know. Obviously, he owns a lot of sports clubs in America, but I'm pretty, he has an MLS team also. I'm pretty sure he owns a team in Europe, so I'm not really sure. I know Blitzer definitely had the team in Belgium. I can't remember exactly if Harris had the Belgium team, Belgium side also. but Or they might own the same team. They might be co owned the same team. Because they do a lot yeah. of stuff together, by the way. They do a lot of yeah. stuff together, Paris and Blitzer. So. Yeah, look, um, trust me, we'll, I'm reading some of the comments as well. We will um, get your thoughts on it at the end of the, you know, the article. Um, there's there's still more uh, to be said. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, interesting. They He basically admitted that they don't agree with the more to club model, but there's more to it. Um, the Athletic asks, how long can this go on for? You know, you seem like there's a disagreement there about, you know, you want to bring in these players and... Um, there's disagreement about multi-club models versus single governance for, for a club. And Texas said the following. He said, it's weird. I'm really, really into Palace. My kids are really into Palace. But then I have different emotion when I'm responsible for the outcome of something. I have a stronger connection. So I'm proud of my role within a small team of good friends for the construction of the roster in Brazil. Building the roster in Belgium started in June of last year. So that was fun. Checking in, on, checking in on Palace at the weekend is different. I'm a fan, but I'm not remotely responsible for that outcome. So, you know, he's talking about Brazil. He's talking about Belgium. But he's saying that, you know, he's really into Palace. But the, it's, it's kind of different because he's not really responsible for that outcome, Patrick. So, you know, from, from the basis so, so far from, you know, the start to here, there's more, of course, to it, is that he wanted a majority of stake. Um, he didn't, He didn't, you know... He doesn't have one right now, and he seemed like he he seemed like he regrets it. Um, he doesn't. He wants to be more hands on, and 
he clearly he clearly doesn't seem happy about the about the situation in, com- in comparison to his other clubs that he owns. I mean, clearly, uh, because again, in the one that I'm most familiar with, which is Botafogo, well, actually, I'm up for all three, with Botafogo and Lyon, in both cases, and as I mentioned the article earlier, there was someone that, again, took his money and then wanted to stay on. Actually, I'm sorry, Molenbeek and, Bot- Molenbeek and Lyon, someone took his money, wanted to stay on and have him be hands up. He's like, no, 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 this isn't working out. So I'm going to put money and I want, a st- I want a stake in it and a say in it. Was he done so far? Both of people are gone, and he's taken over both clubs, and both of them are doing very well. Uh, well, Leon yeah. not great, but Marlon be doing well. In Botafogo's case, he just took over, uh, clean house with the playing staff, basically, you know, uh, bought some new players, and all of a sudden now they're top of the uh, the league that they're in, comp- they're contending in now. So, what he wants, his point, I think, is that I want to have a say because when I have a say in things, I feel more invested in it. I'm not feeling, like, don't feel like a fan. No, I don't, I'm not, you know what I mean? So from that standpoint, I know what he's saying. Because again, in three of the four cases, Molenbeek, Leon, and Botafogo, he's been kind of successful. So from that, so yeah. I get it. So. So, so there's more to it. Um, The Athletic um, said the following, said that that's really sad to hear. And I don't mean to push you for a big headline, but, um, and then Texas said the following. He said, um, I'm trying to think if there's a big headline that's not disruptive. Look, people can call me an investor all day one, but I've never been an investor in somebody else's business. I've built businesses from startups successfully and unsuccessfully. That's what I do. But the likelihood of me being a passive investor for a length of time, if you knew me, you'd know that's not a long-term strategy. So either, this is, people, this is quite big. So either we're invited to take greater leadership over time or we'll want to deploy our, our capital elsewhere because we think it's important to have a UK partner that is, as collaborative with our other clubs as they are today. So before I continue that, Patrick, I'll read out again. He yeah, basically said, this, not basically, this is what John Texas said. So either we're invited to take a greater leadership, um, greater leadership over time, or we'll want to deploy our capital elsewhere. That is, for me, quite significant. He wants more say, it feels like, and he's saying if that's not the case, then... The capital is not going to be towards Palace. I don't know whether that means that he, you know, wants to, you know, leave the leave the club. But he's he's basically saying he's not happy with becoming a passive investor. Right. I mean, and I can kind of see uh, why. I mean, he put he again. He you mentioned before a lot of money he's put in has gone to important things to help the club out. But he's not going to do that forever. I mean, he he feels like maybe he's been taken advantage of, or not even that. More that he came in, wanted to do something, he hasn't got a chance to do it, and. I think it's clear, and I think the end of the article is going to say, you're going to get to the end of the article, he clearly is not going to, he's not sticking around to be a passive investor. He's not giving his money to Steve Parrish, Harrison Business, say, okay, here's my money, uh, I'm looking for a return of investment. So people thought he came here to make money. No, he came here to actually help the club get better. But he's making it very clear, he's not going to stick around and just give his money to whom, whomever is in charge, unless he has a say. And honestly, I can't say as though I blame him. So let me continue what he said. So I'll read it out again and continue it so, so it doesn't get confusing. So he says, so either we're invited to, to take greater leadership over time or we want to deploy our capital elsewhere because we think it's important to have a UK partner that is as collaborative with our other clubs as they are today. But I'm not an idiot. It just so happens that I am an investor at Palace and the value of that investment is significant. I can right. complain about whether Steve likes players with red hair and I like players with blue hair, but the fact is the club is doing well. It's cash flow positive and has an incredible academy. And that academy is the only is the only category one academy in South London. That's going to matter. It's only been category one for a couple of years. In three or four years, you're going to see what I see at Lyon, where nine of the starters are from the academy. Uh, that's why I think Palace has a real opportunity to get to the top. If we add that to an improved stadium and a squad that's full of assets, I know it's two edged sword, but a couple of years ago, we only had one player worth more than £30 million. Now we have several. So I can complain about Steve Style, but he's doing a pretty good job. I may not be in a minority investor by uh, this this position, but I'm not stupid and I'm not going to hurt the investment. So basically, he gave praise to Steve Parish as well. Um, in terms By the of, way, you know, the academy, massive, the stadium. Right. Yeah. That is a massive, massive kudos to Parish there. Because, again, if the plan is in three, four years that our academy is so good that nine of the kids are 
from our academy, and I know Tim's in the chat and mentioned it before, then we're going to go back and say, Parrish has done a great job. My concern is, is that he let, later got on to say that we only had one $30 million asset, obviously Zaha, right? Now we have several, Alise, Gehi, Eze, Decore. But guess what? They're all looking either be sold or to leave. I mean, we might get that later on by Eze now, not someone to sign a contract. But my point is, he's right about that. But that only works if those guys want to buy into the project, right, D? But right now, it seems that those guys are saying, well, right now, I don't want to be around here because Wolf just left or we haven't added any players. So I get the long-term vision of Steve. I, I kind of always have got this long-term vision of Parrish with the academy and the stadium. But as far as this season is concerned, I'm concerned. Now, um, Texas doesn't mention that part in here, but that's a very good point about the academy uh, being important and also the players. But I'm worried about the players leaving. But we might get that later on or we might not. So Yeah. Um, so there's a follow-up. Would it be fair to say you have made a mistake on the way in, um, which is <laughs> an interesting question. And Texas Great said, response. huge mistake. When he was asked whether he made a mistake <laughs> on the way in, he said yeah. huge mistake. And I think this response is very interesting as well. He said, I would still have asked Steve to stay on as a partner, but there, but there are dozens of other shareholders at Palace who I could have bought out and they would have been happy to take the cash. Yep. But yep. what happened is that my cash made the club better and now they don't want to sell. That is very, very interesting. He, he's admitted that he's made a huge mistake based on his words. On the way into the club in 2021, he's saying that he would have kept Steve Parrish on as a partner but the other shareholders at Palace who he could have bought out um, are not willing to sell. And they used, they're saying he used his cash to make the club better. And now they don't want to sell. Now, Patrick, this is more than just, you know, Par um, Texas being upset, it feels like. He made some interesting points about Steve Parish, but the fact that he's saying they've used my money to make the club better now they don't want to sell, that is a big problem. If he, if he feels like that, surely, like, I mean, he's not happy. He wants more of a say in the club. Um, they don't want to sell. So where is the end product in this? How does a settlement reach? I mean, is it that's, that doesn't look good that he thinks that way that, you know, they use his money and now he's just stuck. Well, you got to get to the last paragraph, which you'll get to in a minute. But yeah. again, the key is, you know, when he says mistake, he's talking about just about a mistake regarding Parrish. He's talking about a mistake that he made. So the mistake with Parrish was basically, I made a mistake. I gave my money, made the club better, great. So now the club's worth more. But his mistake that he admits is that when he had a chance, he should have bought more shares. And he should have also, when he bought those shares, made it very clear to Parrish that we are now partners. It's not golden share, nothing. We're going to vote 50-50 because I now own the majority yeah. share. And yeah. he didn't do that. So he's admitting two mistakes. One that, you know, the club got better because of me, mistake, you know, and two, you know, I'm, I, uh, and, and I'm sorry, I know people now are rich and they don't want to give away that richness, which I get. And then the second thing is basically that I should have bought more shares when I had a chance and I didn't. That's my so mistake. that's a mistake, mistake though, no? Yeah, I just said that, a massive mistake. He admits it. Yeah. A massive mistake. But yeah. then that's the thing now, mistakes, is, we're talking big money mistakes. So, but I mean, what's the outcome though, to it? He has, mm. a, he has a way of getting out of that mistake. Get to that part. <laughs> Okay, so let's get to that easily. part, people. Um, yeah. If you are enjoying it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here to see more Palace content. Um, but yeah, so he said the following um, after that. So the Athletic asked this question. You said a moment ago that it was important for Eagle Football to have a UK partner. If you and Palace go your separate ways, would you try this at another English club? And Texas said the following. Yes, and, the, and there's a reason why the UK strategy is important. We have an expression. Okay, it's just me at the moment, but I'm hoping my partners will start saying it too. You have to be a champion for the players before you can be a champion for the fans. That's the answer to the fans when they complain about me moving Brazilian forward Jefinho to France from Botafogo or some other controversial move. Championships are made out of love and great chemistry. They're not made out of individualism and diversiveness. You need a great locker room. The players have to believe that in them. Uh, the players have to believe that you believe in them. Uh, players often use this great word, I went to that club for the project. They don't mean they went to build stadiums. The project is an alignment of the club's leadership with their own career path. And I want to just stop there because I I've said this many times. Um, I don't, actually, I don't think I've said it many times. Let me not lie. But you know when we talk about stands, 
when we talk about new stand, when we talk about academy. Yes, that's great right. for you know parish for the owners for right. for the fans as well in terms of long term project. But I'll be honest, for the likes of Eze, Elise, Gehi, Anderson, why 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 should they give a toss about that? Right. I mean, for for like if realistic, I'm being real. Like, why would they give a toss about the new stand or? Or let's say new academy facility. Yeah, it will benefit us in four to five years' time. But as in Elise and these players, they'll want to play European football, they'll want to go win trophies because they've got the quality. So that's what they'll care about the most. And I think that's where we have this concern of you know going, you know, spending money, trying to improve the squad, keeping these players happy versus trying to improve the club. Because why, you know, why would Eze be happy about a new stand? Yeah, it's, it's great, but it's not gonna impact him and his pockets. It's it's a great point. Then I mentioned I, I talked about that part earlier in, in the show, but that Jafinho thing is a very important thing because you can you can take out the, the name Jafinho and put put in the word the name Eze Olise Gehi Ransom right now for Paris because it may not be that Texas is in charge, but those players are now going to force a move out of the club because they don't see the vision of what Parish has. Again, people may see it, and again, I have no problem with that 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 vision of the stadium and the academy, but that's how's that going to help Eze and Anderson next season or Gay? They can all go Champions League teams right now if they want to, and they're going to force those moves because they don't, they, I can clearly see they don't buy the project because we have not bought any players and they're going to say, well, that's not going to help my, help my, um, my career. And right now, from what I heard today, Eze has already refused the contract extension, which means that he wants to leave and we can't hold him and let him leave like, let, like Wilf left. So I understand this project thing, but Texter, laid it out simply players will not see that vision unless you look out for them first and we're not looking out for our players so, so let me continue um we're sure. going towards the end of the article now so he said the following the uk strategy is important because everyone wants to get there i didn't create the dynamics in brazil that make a player want to get out of the favela and end up in london but i can be the players champion so that so that players trust us and then we can fill the team with enough new players to win the championship while still creating the pathway, the project. That's my multi-club strategy in terms of answers to the multi-club, what he wants to do. Right. Uh, that's his strategy. Everyone tells me, um, I'm an Anglo, a Anglophile. Yeah, Anglophile. And it's probably and it's probably true, but I don't buy that. Um, the only feet of kids born in England are blessed by God. There are kids all over North and South and Central America who are better at $3 million than English players who cost £10 million. What the Premier League, what the Premier League did with the GBE, governor body, governor body exemptions for work permits, and those four extra places was genius. And Steve Parrish played a huge part in it. That's going to be, that's going to put different faces and skin colours on playing fields in England, but will still be able to protect the English game. I don't think like the other multi-club guys. They think about money and synergies. I think about squad construction and player pathways. That's why I'm in this hobby that's become a business. And he ends it there. Wow. Wow. So, you know, he spoke about his multi-club model, um, how he wants to move players from, you know, one side to the other. But Patrick, I think, that, you know, we'll talk about the art school as like a conclusion, as a whole, what we think about it. But I think that's interesting because let's say he wants to move a player over from Brazil to, to Palace. What happens? So where is Palace in this pecking order of the Mortal Club model when it comes to Leon? Because he yes, spent a he, decent he, amount of money he, there as well. It's on the player. It's on, it's on the player. He moved him to Leon. Leon is a team that can get to the Champions League. If Palace were in that, were in that position, he would have gone to Palace. He so does, is, is, does that mean Eze goes to Leon now because Leon gets a Champions League spot? Well, no, because uh, because pa Parish wouldn't send him to Leon. If it was the other way around, yes, Eze would go from Leon to pass if you could reverse it. But my point is, it wouldn't work in this case because, again, Texas is not involved in any of our player um, uh, transactions, let's say. So none of the Pirates players are leaving because the Texas says anything. This could be on Parish. But let's go back a bit deep before we get into that point. I want to shout out a Parish again because when he talks about the, the work permit thing and the four extra places, that is a big shout out to Parish because, remember, the league's all about the, the big six, right, the top six. And Parish went to some meeting a few months ago and talked about it can't be about just the top club. It's got to be about everybody. And that's why we have extra places for Europe coming up soon. And there's less stringent uh, guidelines for players coming from uh, other countries to play in England. And that has to be a shout out to Paris. So that's an important thing. And Texter gave him credit for that. So although there is friction between them, a lot of times in the article, Texter makes a very good point of pointing out that Paris has done a good job. So it's not like they hate each other. 
but it's not going to work long term because again, Texas yeah, wants, to be, more, yeah. wants yeah. to be more involved in the club and Patch won't let him get involved. So let's just get that clear. It's not that they don't hate each other. They clearly don't hate each other. But Texas is not going to stick around and just be the, the money man. He wants to be <coughs> wants to stay. So going back to your so, point about yeah. Eze, Eze will go where Parrish wants him to go or, or won't go. Nothing with Texas. So forget that model that Texas has with Botafogo, Lyon, and even Molenbeek. It's not the Palace model. So whatever Palace do, it's, it's what Parrish, Harris, and Blitz decide they want to do. Well, obviously more Parrish. It's so clear. look, the, the key thing that stood out for me in this whole article, three against one. How he feels 100%. is Parish, Harris, and Blitzar versus him. Yep. Um, and also how he doesn't like his stance on Palace right now, even though he mentioned that and gave credit to C Parish and how we're doing a decent job in terms of you know trying to build an academy and, and the stadium. More. He wants to do more. He wants to get more involved. He wants to get yeah. more involved. So, Patrick, I mean, where do we go from here? Because this is quite big, what he said, some of the stuff that he said. Um, and you know, if he's uncertain about his future because he's not going to have more of a say, I mean, there's there's so many questions I'm going to ask. There's so many. Is this the right timing for this? Because I know some people are upset over that. Some people are saying, um, is this just a PR stunt uh, from Texter? Like, what's your general feeling towards this article now? Now that we've read it as well, I appreciate his honesty and candor because someone had to come out. We've been speculating for so long about what's going on in, in the background. People have uh, cast aspersions towards Tex and may continue to, thinking that he's... I've seen some of the chat comments where people already don't care what Tex has to say, whatever, that's fine. But ultimately, what I feel is that though I think they can get on as human beings, as far as palettes are concerned, Tex will be gone the first shot he gets. My, I always thought it'd be Harrison Blitz that would be gone first. I always thought that, D, with the whole out you know Chelsea and Liverpool I can 100% say I'm going to 100% say in my opinion Tex will be the first one to leave out of the fourth match and it's no doubt in my mind he'll be the first one when he gets a chance to sell out he's going to sell out either it's going to be to Parish if he has the money has some bits they want to take bigger pa- shares Parrish some other person that, that Parish knows no. I know he doesn't I know he doesn't but he's going to be gone and probably go to Brentford or Bournemouth or something like that. Yeah, but I think Bournemouth is interesting because I don't know how true he knows, this is. He knows him. He knows, yeah, he knows the guy. Foley, yeah. yeah Foley, friends, over yeah, in friends, Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I think that would be interesting. And so, Bournemouth, so far this summer, they are doing a few business and <laughs> there's going to be comparison between Bournemouth and Paddis. But look, my 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 stance on it is, with John Texas, my biggest concern with him is he has these great ideas, but where is the money to fund it? Because I don't think he's a billionaire and he doesn't have the funds like Harrison Blitzer, but we got a big problem. Geez, this summer was absolutely terrible, man. What is that? Seriously, what is going on? Zaha left. Now we're hearing about this. I mean, what do you guys make of it? Let us know in the comment section, um, in the live comment section, if you're watching a replay as well, in the comment section down below. Um, what do you guys think about Texas comments? Um, are you a bit more concerned now? Are you a bit more at ease? Are you understanding what Parrish is doing, what Texas is doing? And by the way, this is a one-sided comment of course it'll be nice to hear what Parrish says or harris and blitz to say but harris and blitz are um feels like half the time they forget that they're even owing crystal palace so most likely Paris what Parrish says um but look it's it's it is interesting it is very interesting in terms of what john texan wants to do he wants more power and they don't want to sell sell him that power so would you be okay with harrison blitz getting more power i just i'll be honest they have the money but if they thinking like Parish, I, I just don't know. I just don't know if Harrison Blitz are. I just, I just feel like they go huge super investment model rather than you know trying to progress the club. And I'm just not happy with that stance. I've said it before, people. I think we need to just everyone leave the door and start again, start fresh with one owner who has the money who wants to grow the football club because. Parish made a mistake. John Texter made a mistake by joining Palace. He even he said it in this quote says, "Well." I think we just need to start again. We just need to completely start again because it's Parish versus Texter or Harris Blitzer. I'm Parish now versus Texter, which is what Texter feels like. And it's just not sustainable like this. You need everyone on the same page. But Patrick, the biggest concern is John Texter owns 46%. That is not a small amount. So if he was to leave, I mean, who comes in? Who would you want in? I don't have an opinion on that anymore, D. I used to have an opinion on it because I thought at one point it'd be great if Texas took over, in my opinion, because he seemed to have the 
not maybe not the business sense, but he seems to have the sporting acumen, meaning he wants to make teams better. Again, Botafogo doing well right now. Molenbeek might be short term, but doing well right now. But right now, I have no idea what we're going to do. I just I just feel that Paris is going to be around at least until the new stand is built. And they may at that point want to leave. I'm not really sure. Hassan Blitzer, I don't have the first clue what their what their plans are. I know for a fact I've said before, Harrison and Blitzer are very, very rich. As people interested know, in other Premier League Harris, clubs as well. Harris, so we got so basically got two out of the three owners. So three out of the three out of four owners are basically saying, well, Harrison Blitzer, I haven't said that, but we've seen they've been linked with Man United or with Chelsea in the past. So they've been flirting with other clubs. And now Texas saying that, you know, he you be open to invest in another UK club because it, it fits his project and what he wants to build with this multi club strategy, that they they could well be three out of four owners could well be, you know, investing in other UK clubs that's not palace because of disagreements or I don't know with Harrison Blitz or what what they want or why they want our palace if they do want our palace. Uh, but according to reports, they've tried it in the past. That's not a good sign. Like we just feel like we're just stuck in the middle. So, you know, Texas is not happy that Dougie and, you know, Parrish has got the bigger say, even though he gave him credit many times, but he wants a bit more of a say. He wants to get involved more. Harrison Blitz, so God knows what they want. I mean, this is a mess. This is a mess. What do you think about the timing of, of this as well, uh, Patrick? And and some of his comments, do you think it was necessary? I like it. I respect it because you can't have it both ways. Some people are saying, what did Texas get out of this? But he's basically saying, I put money in. And this is why I'm upset. I'd rather he be honest like this than just to hide it behind the scenes because now we know Texas' point of view rather than jumping to conclusions and making up theories. Texas has invested money into Palace, but it's, it doesn't feel like he wants to invest further more because it's not going to change the stance that he can't have more control at the club. So why should he invest more money into the club? That's what his point is. So, I mean, what do you think about this time in Patrick? Right before the season starts, transfer window still open. Why do you think he'd done this? Well, credit to the reporter. He must have gone to him and asked for the interview and, and then uh and then Texas granted it. I'm gonna assume that the um the uh reporter knows what's going on at the palace, saw Wilf had just left, has seen we haven't bought anybody in the market and just figured it'd be a good time to talk to one of the owners about what's going on and then this came out. So and again he talked he spoke to him a couple of years ago, apparently, but you know, so he's Spoke with the tech they have a relationship before. So I don't know why it came out now. I just think it's a I think it had to happen. I mean, I, know, I heard you yesterday saying, I want to hear from the owners. And then the next day we heard from one of them. So yeah, one of those. It, it had to happen. It, it had to happen. But real quick, <laughs> so I want to go to yeah. I want to go to our owners. I think I, I think uh uh David Blitzer is a majority owner in the following football clubs. We also leak in the MLS, AD Alcaran, Division Two in Spain, SK Beverin, a team I think that. Molenbeek beat in the Belgian Division 2 playoffs. AD, ADO Den Haag in Holland and Bromby in uh, Denmark. He's a minority owner in Augsburg, Estero Praia, um, which are lower leagues. Augsburg is, is in Germany. Estero Praia is in Portugal. The man's a part of, bro. He's a part of. This is David Blitzer. We don't talk about. He's a part of one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six European clubs. Six mm. European clubs, and it goes under the radar. It's something that we don't really speak very about much. So. Right. It's not as oh. open as what John Texer is with his multi club model. Um, it's not, it doesn't feel like a multi club model. It just, he, I feel like he owns six European clubs. I don't know what his goal is with them clubs, but I just think it's more some of the names that you mentioned. I think it's more of like investment based, he's trying to get a return on that, especially like if you're talking about his, his club in Belgium was rivaling John Texer's. Um, it's clearly trying to, you know get them promoted and build them up again. But Tim asked a good question. Uh, would you be okay with Texas as majority owner and leading football decisions? Let's park on that because that is the root of the dispute. So that's the biggest thing. He wants more of a say. He wants to get more involved. And if he doesn't get involved, he's basically saying, if I'm, you know, I'm not in this passive in, you know, investments, I want to get more involved. That's how, that's how I have my fun. So would you be okay with Texter taking the reins? Look, something needs to change. And there's pros and cons to it, Patrick, of both sides. But uh, where do you stand? So I'll say it again because I mentioned it during the article. I understand Parrish's vision with the academy and the new stand. I totally get it. I love what Texas said about in three or four years, if the academy pays off, you're, gonna, you're likely to have nine academy players. That's what Leon has, by the way. Go and look at Leon's, uh at their roster. Like half their team is from academy. 
So I understand that vision that Parrish has. But honestly, if I if I had to choose, I'd rather have Texter involved because I'm only been and this is what we call recency bias, because Marlon Beek just got promoted, but the Fogo is in first place. Leon, though they didn't do well last year, he's clean house, he's gonna get them back, and they are always the Champions League side. They always have been. I think they've made it the last two years. It's not that's not um Texas fault. And by the way, if you want to hear about the people talking about how he's ruining Leon and Botafogo, go back and read the beginning of the article that D didn't read, and he'll talk, you'll he'll you'll learn that. Leon and Botafogo problems that financially are not, they're not Texas. He inherited those problems. So go back and read them. It's very important to learn that. They're not Texas problems. They were, he inherited, and he's talking about how there's a lot of corruption in uh, Brazil, but we won't get into that. You can read it yourself. But very interesting article. But yeah, it's choice. in the description down below, uh, yeah. the link to the article as well. Yeah. I'd rather have Texas from that standpoint because I think he'd push, but I understand why Parrish is never going to leave anytime soon. And I'm resigned to the fact now. You'll not hear me anymore bash Parrish. Uh, bash the manager because I'm telling right now I'm calm. This article helped me a lot. See, see that this is where we are, and nothing's going to change. So me getting upset on on this show or whatever is not going to help. Paris is in charge. Do what you want. That's fine. And do the best you can. Roy Hudson, do the best you can. Imagine this team that you're that you're going to be given. But I'm telling right now, getting upset well, I, again. Everyone in the chat can get upset. I get a lot of negative uh comments made at me about about stuff, which is fine. You can get upset. I'm not going to criticize you. Do you can get upset, stand, whatever. But I know that right now, through the article, and I hope I hear from Parrish that this is where we are as a club, and nothing's going to change. Even if Tector divests himself of that money and someone else comes in, as long as Parrish is there and Harrison Blitzer, nothing's going to change. And that's fine. That's how we are, and that's where we are. I'm going to deal with it best I can. I, I'm making an assumption. This ain't what I think will happen. But I think if John Texter comes in, we could see the approach of more, you know, debt to the club, uh, potentially. That's what I'm I assuming. That. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm assuming as well. Um, but then again, there are other Premier League clubs that do have that approach where the owner, you know, puts their own money with debt. For example, Brian has a has a big one. Um, but you know, that's to the owner. It's not like to to a bank, which um, more time the owner's not going to want it. So one that second. is interesting. Yeah. I just want to address, I'm not sure, Tim, did I say that he's ruining other clubs? I, I don't think I've been, so he said, I'm sorry, Patrick, I don't think he's ruining other clubs, but I would absolutely not want him making football decisions. Money doesn't make him smart. It makes him, oh, maybe it's the other Patrick, not me. I'm sorry. Maybe it's the other Patrick is in the chat also. I got it. I'm sorry, man. I thought it was meant to me. I, I, I hope I didn't say that. I don't think he's ruining clubs. I understand what you're saying, though, Tim, about. But that's uh, the thing. By the way, I need to hold up. Oh. I need to bring this up on that because he gave a huge praise to Doug Friedman. I don't think he's saying. Like he said in an article, I'll read it out again. He, he, gave, he gave a massive break. I don't think he's going him. to literally right. clear out Palace and just become the director of football. He's not going to do that. I just think he wants to have a bit more of a he wants to have much more of a say in terms of the direction that the club is running in. Because right now right. he doesn't he doesn't he clearly doesn't have that. So if he keeps Dougie and if he changes right. that direction, by the way, it doesn't mean just with players, it could be with the stand with the academy. But also, it could mean with the finances, because he did mention that Palace are cash flow positive, which is a positive, which is you know right. good in that aspect. But he might have a different approach, such as more debt to the club, and you know trying to trying to run the football club like that, such as how Brighton are doing. That that might be his approach. So end of the day, we might end up spending more, but it's 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 riskier. But then again, I don't think we'll end up in a situation of administration again. Like that's very that's very unlikely. So I'm not worried about that if he had that but approach. But to Tim's point. And to be fair, because I have to be fair, he he being Texas did just get rid of the entire Molenbeek staff who got Coach promoted. Staff. But Was right, yeah, but he but he mentions the reason why they do not share his vision. So from that standpoint, if I take over a business and even if you do a good job for me, you don't share what I want to do with the club going or the business going forward, I'm gonna get rid of you. So just to be fair, he could be reckless. He could, he could come in and fire Dougie and everybody else. So that could happen. And Hodgson. But my point is that, and that's his, and that's his right, right, as the owner. But my point is that, just to be fair, he has done it. He just gave it about the big to tie off. But he just said that they don't, they weren't doing what he wanted them to do and they don't share the philosophy. They had to go. So, and that's, again, that's in the article. Read it. It's important. He even talk about Botafogo. He was talking about the Leon owner who wants him to, like, like, by the way, the Leon owner wants to be like Parrish. Take his money and give him no say. And he goes, no, 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 no. If I'm coming in, I'm, I'm having a say. And what did he do? He pushed the guy out. So maybe oh, he learned from his Paris, mistake. Maybe he Paris learned from his huge that. mistake. Yeah, he learned from his huge mistake at Palace because he even said that he made a huge possibly. mistake. Um, yeah, so he learned yeah, from that clearly. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and we'll yeah. see what happens with Leon. But interesting. Honestly, I, I'm leaning more towards a change. There needs to be a change. Right now, I'll be honest, by the way, we talk about 
I, I don't think Parrish has any bad intentions for the football club. No, he doesn't. Means. He doesn't. But then again, you have to remember that he's involved with the minimum shares that he has. He, this is still an investment for him. And he doesn't want this investment to be absolutely ruined as well. So I think what is right now with Harris Blitz and Parrish, they're more on this, let's be sustainable. John takes someone to take more risks. And honestly, as a fan, I want to see us progress. I want to see us progress. If Texas, my biggest problem with Texas, does he have the money? If Texas does have the money, if this ego holding SPAC goes ahead, I know there was a bit of a delay for another month with that. But if, if it all if it all does happen, then I'm, I'm willing to probably you know before I've, I've questioned Texas, but I'm, from what I've seen, it seems like he wants to get more involved. He's enjoying it with the others with Harrison Blitz. I don't I don't get that sense. It's a, it's more of a case of. Right, they'll get more so, involved to protect their investment, which is what right. happened when you know Big Sam, Big Sam came in and brought in member PVA, etc. Right, right, yep, 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 that, so it's that, all yep. about protecting the investment about- rather than you know growing the football club. So for me, I'd rather have someone who actually wants to grow the football club because I'm tired of this football club being seen as an investment. Yes, you want to be sustainable, and I have no problem with that. And Texas even gave praises to Steve Parish, but I also want to see the club somehow you know try to progress. And right now. With the model that we have, I, I get it to a certain extent, but other clubs have the money to improve the facilities and improve the squad as well. And we're just trying to do one of the two things, which will naturally get us left behind. So I, 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 I would I would want to change. I've said it before. I think Steve Parrish done a fantastic job, but this model is not going to run. Something needs to so change. I'm gonna, so I'm going to say two things. One directed at you, actually. It's funny you just said, does Texas have the money? D, that doesn't matter anymore for two reasons. One... He's put money into the club, and at some point, Parrish has not used it what he wanted to. And two, you, it's clear he's not going to put more anymore. If he had the money now, he's not doing any more investing in this club any, say, anyway. He's sorry to cut it. you off. Yeah, sorry yeah, to cut sure. you off. One thing. Our most successful window was funded by John Texter, was it not? Yeah. 2021. Bring that bring yeah. it up. Eze. No, sorry. Olise, Anderson, Gahey, Edward, Hughes. I'm missing one of them. I always miss one of the players. But yeah, exactly. All of that money came from John Texter. Not Harris. That is very Mr. interesting. And not Paris. That's, exactly. that's, that's, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we'll have winners like that every single summer, but the fact that he's saying that he really isn't keen on putting more money in because he's not going to have more of a say is kind of basically saying, well, this is what I've done. I'm not going to do more because I don't want people to use my cash to improve the club and not right. you know, and then sell not me bigger exactly. portions so I can have a bigger say. So right. there's, a, there's, a, there's a conflict in that approach, but... That's that's a, interesting. In 2021, you got involved and look at so, our window. Yeah, you mentioned about... And, and the other thing I'm going to say is, do we have any money to spend? We don't. The money we've had in the past will all come from one person putting it in. It should be about As 90 million. Well, left from a Hummer that I accepted, but probably a bit less than that from the text right. of 30 million. But yeah, it's barely any... It doesn't seem like significant. Well, it's not enough to but go out and get any of the gifts amount of players. There, right? is, there is reports of further cash injection into the club, but... I mean, how from, long? From whom? How, from Harrison yeah, Blitzer, I hope. Yeah. I, I guess so, because Texas seems like he doesn't want to put more money it's in. It's not going to be Texas money. Texas money is never going to be put in a club again unless something changes. So I think at that point, we're looking at Harrison Blitzer, and I don't, unless I miss something, they're not, they're, they're very happy being in the Premier League and reaping those benefits for putting more money into the club. No, they're going to sit back like Paris is going to do, hope we stay up, uh, get this new stand built, and hopefully pro- pro- profit from the academy. But that's a long-term vision that I might not be around to, to see because I'm not that young anymore. So I don't know. So, it, but it, but it, like I just said, I'm, I'm resigned to the fact that that's what it is. I'm not going to get upset because I, I now I now better understand where the club is coming from. And I'm glad John Tech spoke because it gave me clarity. And again, it actually made me feel better about Paris because I'm not as mad as I was before. I get what he's trying to do. I don't agree with what he's trying to do, but I get it now because an owner has basically backed up what I've always thought that, you know, it's about the, the new stand, running the club financially, not going in debt, as Tim always said, which is all very good things. And hopefully at some point, uh, getting the academy to uh, pay off. I just I just have a hard time dealing with it, but I'm going to have to deal with it. Because we're not, we are not going to get any any players in or progress at, at currently. And I'm just going to have to deal with that. So, and this Franca, is, yeah. whomever, it's just... It's just so what, what now? What now? Because this opens up a massive... A massive like what 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 now like well, where do you go from here texas spoke out spoke out he said that he doesn't see really the long-term investment in club if it's if it's going to be in a passive way and he wants to get more involved so patrick where do you go from here because this is not what you want to hear literally one of your you know for a guy that owns 46 percent that's saying you know i want a different basically different approach to what parish wants 
And if if that's not the case, then you know there's a good chance that I'll leave because that's not what I what I like to do. So what now, Patrick? What do you, where do we go from here? Because it, it's just annoying. We, I mean, this is we need to bring in players. I'm not saying this is going to like ruin the player market, but it's not good to hear. It's, it's it's not good to hear in that aspect. But it's our theories about you know problems behind the scenes just proven to be correct. Yeah, I, where we go from here? My immediate concern, honestly, is uh, our current our current top players. Can we keep them? That's my immediate. That's my immediate uh, concern. And based on this article and the thoughts of um, players buying into the project as you as we would like to use i'm sure as a at least say i'm not buying into this two three years down the line main stands built we're going to be going fighting for europe you can say that we're going for top 10 this season but it's never going to happen and i and what i fear is that we're going to sell i'm gonna say right now we're going to end up selling as a and at least say during this current window and possibly nah, that's, not gonna, that's not gonna happen that's not gonna happen that's right. that, that's okay. enough impossible that's for, my me fear. To, for it that's for my it fear i didn't oh, that's your fear, that's fear. Uh, and there's also this aspect if takes a whistle leave who buys them out? I don't know if I'll be. I I don't know if I'll be happy with Harrison Blitzer buying them out. I'll be honest, because I mean, where have Harrison Blitzer been successful like that? Because I've heard just negative things. I mean, Patrick, the other Patrick over in America with the Sixers. I mean, he spoke about it as well. He does not like Harrison Blitzer to what he's done to his team in in the NBA. So I mean, geez. Even with the buyout situation of like Texas leaving a club, I mean, who on earth comes in? Who on earth would want to join this model? If it ain't them two, then who on earth would want to join this model in the first place? Okay, so to give a little balance to Patrick, and I know Patrick lives in Philly or used to live in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, I'm a big hockey fan, and I know a lot about the Devils, and they have been very, very bad for a lot of time. But you know how American sports work, do you, right? The worse you are, the better draft picks you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. They've actually built themselves out to be a they're a decent club again, the hockey team. So they the can't do that fine. in the Prem, though. No, no, no. I'm just like, I'm trying to explain to you. I'm just trying to explain to you. You talk about how they're poorly won in America. And I'll say again about the six of your basketball fan. They have one of the better players in the league in uh um the center. What's his name again? What's the center's Embiid. name again for Embiid, right? They had they had they actually have a couple of other uh, uh, Tyrese Max is decent player. They, they've got a decent team, um, so they're not a they're not a terrible franchise. The problem is in the East, you've got a lot of good teams. You got Boston, you got Milwaukee, etc. You know, you know NBA. So they're not, but they're not a terrible team in the Sixers. So my point is, he doesn't actually have awful franchises. He did just buy the the Commanders in NFL, who are not a good franchise, but he didn't buy them by himself. He's got a lot of minority investors. One of them is Magic Johnson. He's you know to play for the Lakers, so I don't think they're gonna be bad for for much longer. So my point is, he's not a great owner, uh, like let's say um, uh, the uh, uh, Cronky in the American teams, but he's not awful. I mean, Cronky. Like but again, yeah. but again, you're right. It's not the same model in America, so you can't really compare. I'm just trying to give you a little balance for the American teams. I don't know. I don't know if Harrison Blitz are good are good uh, football owners. Like the teams that I mentioned for Blitz aren't very good teams. They're okay. They're not a great team that he owns, Bromby. Oh, you know what? I realized we just played Bromby in a friendly. That's probably why you played them. I just realized that, right? What? And he owns owned by a texter. Because of Blitzer. Why would we play one of his uh, clubs? Right? What is this? Like, is this like a multi club, like no, preseason tour? I'm saying, no, I didn't, I didn't realize. I, I had no idea you're on Bromby. Yeah, I, I had no well idea. Up, yeah. So we got yeah, Leon coming Leon up. Is but all coming again, up. Uh, so. I, the, the whole Harris Blitzer thing is just, I don't think they're going this to is about Patrick, about Patrick, Patrick, I think we can both agree. There needs to be a change. There will be a change. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. There has to be a change. But there won't uh, be. For me, I, I, want, I want a, new, I want a new, new chapter. I'll keep Dougie there. But apart from that, the rest, I mean, this is just too messy. This is just, it, it's too messy. But you know what? Who invited? So John Texas said he was invited to Palace. That's what he said. That was by, that was by yeah. Steve Parrish, hundred percent. Yeah. So, so when, so I said this before. For example, let's talk about you know when um what's his name, Sean Derry. When you know Sean Derry in the coaching staff when he got sacked under Patrick Vieira, I I was okay with that decision because at the end of the day, who's responsible for you know the game results? It won't be Sean Derry. It will be Vieira. Yeah, so Vieira, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, he's going to end up paying the price for that. Or it was going to work out for him. Now, Vieira's not at the job. I'm not saying it's because of Sean Derry, but, you know, he paid a price. And this, the people that brought in these owners or Texter, Steve Parrish, he needs to be held responsible for this as well because he's the one that invited John Texter. So, I mean, what was he thinking of? What 
why like, do you get it? Like, why did you invite him if 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 this is what he wanted, or maybe John Texas didn't make, didn't make it clear? But honestly, a new chapter needs to begin because this is frustrating with the ownership. I'm just tired of talking about ownership. Ownership has become a massive problem at this club, and is 100 percent going to hold us back in terms of progressing. Uh, the new stadium is going to help. The new stand is going to help. The academy is going to help. But the thing is, you can't rely... The academy, you can't fast develop some of these players. They're doing well in the under-18s, under-21s. But the reality of it is, right now, we don't have eight players coming to the first team. We, we The academy hasn't reached that stage yet. Yeah, um, right, it has right, got yeah. a few good, good one or two players, but we have to be realistic. Playing academy football compared to first team football, there's a very, very limited number of people that I'll take. Right now, Ozo, maybe Raksaki, who didn't play academy but football D, last season. He said, and that's he the thing. said three years. Raksaki in three years would be ready. Ozo three years would be ready. You know what I mean? So he said... He well, well, now, well, in three years, we'll be a Premier League football club? <laughs> I fear not, but I don't know. I fear not. 100% fear we won't be. So that's, a, that's the issue, right? That's a, that's the issue. Like three years is, is a long time. Three to four years is a long time. In three to four years, just to put into context, in three to four years, let's get Eze's age right now. How old is Eze right now? Let me get Eze's age. Twenty five. Twenty five. Nah, nah, he's not that old. Surely, no way. Twenty five. Twenty four. Oh, he's twenty five. Yeah, Damn, 25, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in three so years 20, time, twenty eight. Yeah, twenty eight. Like that's a massive you know difference. Like imagine Eze in three years time will be twenty eight. So, I mean. This is this is where we stand right now. Check Texter versus the three other owners. Which one of them is gonna drop their guard? Which one of them is gonna leave? Are they going to give him more shares? I don't think they will. Clearly, they don't want to. That's why I think Texas come out publicly um, to let the fans know about how he feels about his plans for the club. He hasn't slated Steve Parish completely. He's given praise to Steve Parish and Dougie Friedman, um, but he's saying he has a different vision to how they want to run the football club. And here we are. Here we are, the person who owns near enough, not majority, about 46%, is not happy. And he's saying, if this is the case, in the long term, you might not see me at Palace. And that raises the bigger questions. Who on earth takes <laughs> takes over? Is that Harrison Blitzer? Is there another investor that comes? That's what I'm saying. If if, if Texas was to sell out, then I would just prefer just all of them just to leave through the door and we just start fresh. And, you know, it's it's annoying, Patrick. It's, on, it's honestly annoying, talking about owners. We should be talking about players coming in. Look at 2021, the summer of 2021 compared to now. Two years. He hasn't even been three years. You know the three-year timeline? He hasn't even been three years like, from 2021 to right. here. Like, right. three years three is a years. long time. It's a long time and a lot can happen in three years. And here we're talking about, instead of the likes of, oh, Gay joined the team, Elise joined the team, oh, we've got a younger manager. We're talking about, damn, what are we doing with the owners? Who's coming in next? Because right now, all we've got is Lerma. That's the reality of the situation. Still a month left till the window closes, but it's it, it, regardless of who we sign, if if they're not on the same page, that's always going to be a problem. So yeah, it is it is very it is very frustrating. But um, we'll go through some of the comments and wrap this up because um, we have been going for a while. Um, there's been debates. Um, Jason saying Tim isn't realistic to believe we can out compete for players to have way more history and success and more money. That's a romantic view. Players choose where they can make most money. Um, or be successful or win. A lot of people want to win too. Well, to a lot fair. of people want to win. Um, look, as it look, this is so today. I don't know if you guys heard of it. It's not the most reliable source, but we'll mention it as well. Um, it seems well, according to reports from I think it was Team Talk. As no, it Alan, has, wasn't it Alan, Alan Nixon? Wasn't it? No, it wasn't <laughs> Alan Nixon. I don't think it was Alan Nixon. If it was I'm Alan joking. Nixon, then I'll believe I'm it. Joking. But yeah, um, <laughs> according to reports from Team Talk, as it has rejected, um a contract proposal from Palace. Well, we don't know how true this is. No other serious uh, reporters have, have suggested that this has any truth or has any false to it. So we don't know. It's been a quite frantic day. Um, but where I stand with it is Eze is a player that spoke about in this preseason how, you know, he would love for Zaha to stay. And he said the aim for him, as fans, we have different aims to play. But for him, how he sees it is that we should be pushing for Europe. Realistically, right now, Europe pushing for Europe just sounds absolutely crazy. But of course, a player of Eze's quality will have them ambitions. So where my problem lies is, I know this is not really our, mo our model is to buy these players and sell them on. But if you want to keep them players for Palace's sake, you need to show a bit more ambition. I don't think we were matching the ambitions of these younger players. I don't think these younger players want to stay at Palace just just to stay 
stay up or fight for top 10. They want to have an objective of European football. They'll want to compete or fight for trophies. And I don't think we're showing it right now. So if that as a contract situation was true, it wouldn't surprise me because I don't think we're matching Eze's ambitions. And a lot of change this summer. Well, Zaha leaving is a big statement to the other players as well. And it's a bit of a shock. And we still haven't got a replacement for him. So we need to match the ambitions of these younger players. And I don't feel like we're doing it right now. And I don't know if we will do it based on the budget talk and all of this and that. So it's it's not good in that aspect um, to keep those younger players interested. Uh, Samuel says, that's an interesting point, D. What was Parrish thinking bringing in Texas? He was never going to be a signing investor. And that's the thing. When we talk about a manager, we blame the manager for, for you know, results and talk about sacking a manager. But when it comes to the owners, Parrish brought in these people. As good as the job is done, now we're in this mess of, you know, John Texas coming out publicly speaking. It's because Parrish brought him in. John Texas didn't need to join the club. He got invited. So... But oh, wait a minute. But to, to counter that, Sam, well, it's a good point. Parish brought him in and got what he wanted. He got he got a got a silent partner who gives him money and doesn't have anything to say. So Parish Parish pulled the blind end for I'm gonna say he did a great job getting him in there. Well, <laughs> All yeah. his money with none of the say. Uh, what, what's what's wrong with that? So that is an issue though, because what you were saying, which of makes sense, it's an a issue. Because well, imagine you spend all that Parrish. money and then yeah, exactly. I think Texas are because you were saying that Patrick in the past, you were saying he would want to join. Well, he would want to stay at Palace if if another right. man controls what right. his decisions are well, by yes, using right, his exactly. money. So that is an issue. And it makes sense. It we're though. not talking about five pounds or ten pounds. We're talking about millions and millions Mill of pounds of money. Of people pound. are putting yeah. the money to the club and they're not having a sale of it. So something needs to change. And right now, the only thing that could realistically change is these owners coming together and saying, you know what? We're either going to sell up to Texas or we're going to, you know, Texas, sorry, this is how we stand. You have to leave. That needs to happen sooner rather than later. So we no, 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 no. I, I disagree that last part. They're not going to have... Texter will leave of his own volition. He'll just, he'll just leave. He's already... In that article at the end, he's basically saying, I'm going to leave because at this point, nothing's going to change. And he understands it's not going to change. So not gonna, they're not going to say to him, you got to sell up Texas. Texas is going to... He's going to sell the shares to whomever and just leave. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind it's going to happen. Though. I don't think they have to force him out. He'll just leave of his own choice. Yeah. Uh, so. Tim's saying plays that join before Texter as a... Uh, Benteke, Sacco, Townsend, and Schlupp. He deserves credit, but let's not uh, pretend nothing happened before him. I agree, Tim, uh, but, but Tim, our most successful window has been under John right. Texas. The, the younger players. There's no debate this, about that. No and by the way, players, this, the but... Sacco, Sacco was, we had to, otherwise we're probably getting relegated. Remember, it was a lone move, and then after we made a permanent, yes, we made a permanent, but those are, well, Sacco was out of desperation. Benteke, because we saw Balassi, remember? We saw Blasi that window to, to Everton and then we brought in Benteke. So it's not like we spent out of our own way. Townsend, yeah, and Schlupp, you can have that point. But Sacco, it seemed like it was more of a Harrison Blitzer thing um, at the time. Because I remember when Big Sam came in, there was, you know, PVA um, but, joined as well. Schlupp joined. But again, Tim, great points. But of those players, besides Eze, which of those players did we buy to sell on later on? Not one. But we bought Olise to sell him on. Gay to sell him on. Even Anderson, to a degree, to sell him on, right? So it's like we have a different model now. The Corey we bought now to sell him on at some point, correct? Where those people we just bought, like you said, to keep us up, basically, right? And at some point, like we gotta buy Benteke, we're going down. We got even a striker. We gotta buy Sacco. You, you know, we're going. To, we gotta buy Anderson Townsend. We got we got rid of Balassi, and we'll see the part on the other side. So I know what you're saying, Tim, but the truth is, when Texter came in and, and, and we bought those players, it was and it was because the parish clearly, right? The model was to buy young, buy potential to sell at some point on. Whereas in that case, it was like, we need to stay up. We're going to buy players. So, But you're right. We spent money before Texas came here for sure. We definitely spent money Yeah, before. Tim's saying, I get it. But as an American, I've seen a lot of American entre entre entrepreneurs like Techstar. I'm deeply frustrated that we aren't more sceptical. No, I agree. I said there's, there, there are questions about John Texas as well. We don't know his true intention. This is what he's put out, but we don't know. But look, based on Tim, what he's done at other clubs, can you... it seems... Yeah, go on. Tim, sorry, I I live in America. Tim, name some, because I'm interested to know who you're talking about specifically. If you can, if you, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. But like, I see a lot of successful Americans that come into into English sports. I mean, we're not gonna. I mean, people say Bowley is a whatever, but I would have taken Bowley at Palace because Bowley's spending money like a like a sailor. I don't know. I wouldn't. Be he just uh, he didn't have direction, and now it seemed like right. And now that he does, he, he just, got, yeah, exactly. He got, the he, now, you know? he got through in the deep end, but yeah, uh, yeah. Gronk, I just thought Bowley was crazy. 
Kronke, you know what, for all of his faults, also are 100% back. The one I would obviously say, well, Joe Lewis recently, because he just got caught up in some investment thing for Spurs, that's a massive problem. And obviously the Glazers. Everybody hates the Glazers, but even on the Glazers, the freak, even on the Glazers, the match and I still won stuff. As much as they aren't the great United, yeah, they still win yeah, stuff, yeah. which is frustrating for their fans, but not... I know, I see that. I see Glazers, you're right. But the thing is, Glazers, you're right, Tim, but they still win. So, but you're right. Glazers would be the one I would say to speculate on, because they're worst. definitely in just for the money. I 100% agree on that. Yeah, exactly, 100% for the money. So. For the money. Yeah. Um, but look, th- Tim, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying um, about, about tech stuff, but I'll be honest. I'm... This I, I've said it before. Like I've I've been watching football for ages. I've seen it with other owners as well. Look at Bournemouth. They you know they they had to sell up because you reach a limit. You reach a limit. Unfortunately, Parish doesn't have the money, but he has a big say in terms of how the club is run. So there is a direct conflict there. You don't have the money, but you have a big say on how the club is run. Yes, he has run the club, you know, well. He's built, he's built this academy, which is fantastic, and new stand is fantastic. But I'm looking at the next five to ten years. We're relying heavily on an academy. We still need to invest in players. Like the academy, it might be great, but we will still need to spend money on players. And this sustainable model with the, how the Premier League is going right now, if this was about ten years ago, I'll say fair enough. You know, that's going to be years interesting. Ago. Seven oh, yeah, ago. yeah, it will yeah. make it way more interesting. But the yeah. money involved in the Premier League now is absolutely ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. The academy is 100% going to help us. But the fact of the matter is, teams will improve. I mean, Newcastle, they're improving their facility, their training ground as well. But they still got money to spend on players. The, the Being sustainable in the Premier League, is it should be the way, but it's very hard to be successful like that. And right now with, you know, Steve Parrish, as much as I want it to work, I just don't see how we will progress as a football club rather than talk about the same thing year in, year out. Harrison Blitzer, I'll be honest, I have no interest in them because I genuinely feel like they just see it as an investment, nothing more. There's no emotional impact to it. And Texas, I have my worries as well. And that's why, for me, the best thing will be for all of them to sell out, someone to come in that has money and that wants to do better. Because the Premier League has turned into, and I say this every single time, it's turned into a playground for the rich. And just having an academy and building, you know, a new stand. We're not building an 80,000 capacity stadium where we're going to generate crazy amounts of money. We're building a new stand, which is going to help us, but it's not going to be like club changing. It's not going to be like, right. oh, now there's a new Crystal Palace because we've got a new stand. It will help us, but it's. It, I just see us getting left behind because Bournemouth, I can see them building a new stadium. They want to do that. And the new training ground. Right. And in the long term, I'm not talking about this season, in the long term... I, this model is not going to run, and see, Parrish just does not have the funds to take so, this club forward. He has he's, he's brought in players. That's why. Why do you think Texas is at the club, or why do you think Harrison Blitz at the club to build what Parrish wants to do with you know the new stand, the academy? Right. But after that's built, where do we go from here? Because do Texas doesn't here? want to spend more money. Right. Parrish doesn't have money, and does Harrison Blitz just want to fund the rest of them? I doubt it. So I think we're hitting a limit. We're slowly hitting a limit after the new stand is built, after the academy is built. It's about where do we go from here, and I just don't see with the with the play, with the staff that we got right now with Paris, um, Harris and Blitzer and Texar. I just don't see it working in the long run. I agree. So, Tim, to your point about um, we bought players before. Now, Adam, I saw the same article by the way, so I'm reading. It. it says Adam says, and thanks again, Adam, for tuning into the show. I saw an article that said Sacco, PVA, MacArthur, Kabai, Wickham, Townsend, all bought. And all left us for free. Also, Benteke bought for 30 million, sold for four million. Zaha went for free. So, from what I'm, what I, what I, I'm saying is that's the model that Parish has previously bought into. This model. Now, whether you want to say it's Texter or coincidence, since Texas come in, we don't do that anymore. Now we're buying players like Olise and Gehi, Abue. Let's say if he ever develops. To Corey for sure to sell them on because they're going to increase in value. So to me, the mindset has changed. Maybe Paris changed by himself, but maybe because Texas came in, things have changed. Because Adam's right, we put all those players and every one of them left for absolutely nothing, and that's not sustainable. So there's yeah. that. Yeah, um, Tim says yes, it will. I hate focus on the stand, but it's the number one financial uh, level to move up because get receipts is. is a number two source right. of funds. He's right. But I get that, but it's not like we're going to have a 60,000 capacity stadium. It's going to turn into what? 32,000 from 26,000 or 34,000? 
Are the luxury boxes in there or no? Then gonna yeah, I know, but, I don't, but Patrick, realistically, no, but that makes money, can answer this as well. Realistically, I don't think Palace generating 40, 30 to 40 million pound more year on year from, you know, 6,000 capacity. Maybe it might be 5 to 10 million. I'm just getting numbers off the top of my head. But I don't think it's going to be like just completely changing the life changing money that's going to be coming from the stand. But look what, what, look, Adam, Andy, Mac. Again, thanks, Andy, for tuning in. We had the fourth smallest stadium. I think fancy will be the ninth smallest. So it's it's gonna move five spots up. So right now that would be what sixteenth, and now we're going to be like eleventh. That could be a big deal, D. I mean, I don't know if the numbers are right. I'm sure and Andy is, but you know what I'm saying. So to me, that that's important. If it goes from the fourth smallest to the ninth smallest, that's a pretty big deal. That's you know what I mean, D. So there's that. What do you think, think that's gonna change our our transfer budget just completely from twenty six thousand to the way the from twenty six thousand to thirty four thousand, eight thousand well, increase. Think, Tim has this. Does he mean is that what the capacity can be 35 to 40? So that nah, is a big that's difference. Not 35, yeah, it's 30, it's 100 percent 32 so that, to 30, 30, 34. 34 40. Okay. 34 yeah, okay, yeah. It's 30, okay. 32 to 34. Look, the stadium will help in the long term, but Patrick, my point is the stadium is gonna there help you go, us. Tim again. Sponsorship yeah. boxes, you know, yeah, all that helps. So yeah, yeah. That, it, it, it's going to help us. But the reality is these people don't want to spend the money that you need to spend in the Premier League. They're not, not right going to spend now. on transfer fees. Yeah. Exactly. You're right. And I don't You're think right. anything's going to significantly change. Of Yeah, there might be a, you know, a few, you know, maybe 10, 15 million more every year in terms of budget, but it's not going to be like we're going to have 60 million to spend every single summer. Like, I just don't think that these owners see as investment. Look, even Texas said it. He doesn't want to be, become a passive investor. Paris right. is probably looking at his investment as well. It, I don't, it's just not sustainable. Regardless of the new stand, we're not building an 80,000 the capacity stadium we're building a stadium that will hold 34,000 it will increase our commercial aspects 100% but it's not going to be like I'm I, honestly I'm not gonna sit here in three to four years I'm gonna say wow that's it new sand made us change our whole approach it's gonna help us but I don't think anything right. significant is gonna change unless the owners change you know I just I just think the money's on the owners but the stadium will 100% help us just like the academy is gonna help us but the reality is that's not gonna be enough I don't think that would be it, enough to change. This everything. will help. This will help, though. A little comedy relief for my nephew. How many times did I ask you to take and catch off our hands, Uncle? We will, he'll be another Ian Wright in the making. Mikey, I appreciate your Arsenal love, but between you and me, you can keep and catch here. Thank, I appreciate that. <laughs> this I love this ain't the time right you. now. This ain't I the love time. You, Mikey, we'll I'll, I'll see you very soon, but we're not doing that. We're not going to buy and catch off Arsenal. But thanks, nephew. I love you. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Um... But yeah, Fulham twenty two thousand, Brentford eighteen thousand. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go back, go back, go back. Sorry, yeah, go back. Uh, yeah, Bournemouth eleven thousand. Yeah, Bournemouth will change as well. Say that. Look, my point is the stadium increase will hundred percent help us, but I don't think Crystal Palace is going to be revolutionised after an increase to the stadium. I don't think it's going to be like, oh, that's it now. We're we're there. Like we we're, we're sorted. It will help us. But my it point will is, help, and I think everything academy help, stadium help. You know, everything it helps. Has to but help. is it enough? You know what I mean, so. I don't know. But I don't is it know. enough? I, don't, I just don't question. see our budget just dramatically changing from it. I, d I just don't think... Does like, that have to be dramatic, D? Does that have to change? Does that have to be a dramatic change? Just yeah, change? but Patrick, it has to be dramatic because right now, as it stands, we're, we're, we're on peanuts, it feels like. I mean, Hold on a we've second. only had one free signing, so it has I to be listened, dramatic. I listened yesterday to your show, which is very good, by the way. Even in Chicago, I'm, I'm watching your show, bro. So good job by yourself yesterday. And you just said, I know we need blah, 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 but you'd be happy with... I think you said three signings, right? Didn't you say... You said, obviously, you said uh, Quality, a though. striker. A, you, did you say striker, a left yeah, winger, striker, left and, winger a right and a right back? Or left, or left back because of the injury. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's not a lot of money, D. It's not. That could be two two buys and a loan to get through the season. So it's not dramatic no, if you're even talking now. about the quality, yes, we do need to spend. I don't think okay, what striker is going to come in that's going to be cheap. Even Enketo, you're that? saying we don't want him, but they, they're reported. If, if Enketo is 35 to 40, 40 million, million, million market. I know that. Yeah, but Patrick, we need to spend money. If, okay, let's say striker, 25 million. Left winger, we can't, well, we're going to spend 5 million on a left winger. If it's Franca, that'll be like 25. If we're serious about business, we I have to spend... Doy, I was going to do it, I was 8 million, no? I just wanted to yeah, do but 8 million. Even that, about wages, and that's yeah. that's the that's the issue. That's what it's, it Okay, wait like. a minute. I'm pretty sure he's in the last year of his contract, isn't he? Is this, so we can negotiate that contract down after, no? Am I wrong? Yeah, but full of my interest as well, so I don't know how it works. But right, but my point is, it can we can we can work it. We, we can work it. It we can work 40 million and get those three players. One loan, two buys. We're not going to do it. Listen, don't get me wrong. We're not going to do it. I'm not saying that. I'm okay, saying my, okay, my question is, do you think this stadium... Do you, okay, my question is, do you think this 8,000 
capacity increase is going to bring generate forty million pound every year. Well, I don't have the numbers. I wish that, Tim was in the show now. Tim, I need you to help me out. I don't know what kind of money. All right, Tim said, what kind of money could it generate, Tim? I don't, I don't know the numbers. I'm honestly, I'm not trying to be funny. I don't know what. Yeah, that but would realistically, generate. I just so. don't see eight thousand difference in terms of there'll be di different, you know, commercial aspects as well that will help. But I just don't see forty million. I just don't see it will make that much of a difference. I, I'm assuming about ten to fifteen million a year, which will help right. us. But even that is that even too high? I look, at the end of the day, Patrick, you need money in the Premier League, and our owners right now, one of them has money. The other one, you know, Harrison Blitz, they have money. They clearly want to see as a... Three have money. You did one. Three have money. Oh, oh, no, oh, no. Three have money. One won't... Three won't spend. <laughs> yeah. Or invest. We need, to, we need to build this new stand regardless. But with the new stand being built, the, there's still a problem with our owners. That something needs right. to change. It, it still doesn't... It still doesn't solve everything. And that's that's the reality we, of the situation. We could always do this, though. Okay, you want some money? You want some quick money? We could do this. My, my nephew again. As a at least in vocal also. <laughs> my, yeah. my nephew's killing me today, man. He's killing me yeah. today. In funny, long though, term, very funny. In the long term, you want to, of course, improve the academy, which we're doing, improve the stadium, doing. which we're doing. doing but it seems like our excuse here is we're building a new academy, building a new stadium, we don't have the money. If it's coming as a cost in terms of like we have a limited budget and we can't spend money in, in the here we go. window, then thank you, Tim. Here we go, D. Read that. Yeah. Up to 20 to 25 million, but would that's, it double that's, it though? That's decent, that's decent. What, now eight, it's 10 to 13. So, so, but but how would but how would that work if we're increasing it from a capacity 26 if 26,000 people generates 10 to 13? How does 8,000 more than 26 generate you know double that? Well, one, like I said, I think I'm pretty sure some of them are corporate, so corporate spend more, pay more money. So that's one reason. Yeah, but again, but we're talking millions. Person, that means we're talking more. millions. Corporate pays more right. money. We're talking millions. I'd, I'd, I'll be surprised if it's like doubling up. But let's say, you know, I guess if it is, if it's 20, 25, then that'd be great. I'm offended but... that you're that you're questioning Tim and Tim's the money man. I'm just offended that you're. No, I'm just I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking no, I'm, questions. I'm just messing. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. I get it. Okay, I so here here comes the thing. So. Ticket okay. price go up, so me luxury boxes, like to, I yeah. said, exactly. Right. So it's not just it's wait, not, wait, me season ticket holder, me, me, yeah, and you, remember? Holder as well. So, there, yeah. so, there, so, yeah, so there's a cost to this. I'm so, we can't the fund this. So, there's already yeah. the cost, my brother, already the cost, yeah, exactly. Luxury so. boxes, corporate sponsorship, etc. And, 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 and look, and look, hold up, hold up, let's talk about Tottenham. Tottenham built this glamorous, one of the best stadiums. I'm going there tomorrow, in fact, um, to, oh, to go nice. to a concert. Concert, and they have all these new stands. Game, and... No football, huh? yeah, concert. No not football for game. football, yeah. Concert, not for football, yeah. 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 Exactly. They've, they've built this. I mean, has Tottenham just significantly changed? What was the plan that Levy sold Tottenham fans? Tottenham fans are still crying as, as much as it is right now. That, Tottenham had to do that. They had to build a new stadium. They had to build a new uh, They had to build a new stadium because, you know, to improve as a football club. But Tottenham built a whole new stadium. We're building a stand. And right now... I haven't seen any different approach to Tottenham. Why? Because the same people are still running the show. That's the problem. All right. I'm I'm gonna pull you up on that because one, I know for a fact that there was a there was there's a debt involved in it. So not you're not gonna and you don't generate profit the first year or second year of a of a new stadium. So I think long term it's gonna benefit them massively, short term not so much. And secondly, as much as it wasn't a great job by Conte, I'm gonna look at it now. They bought last season, okay. Um, they bought in Jed Spence, they brought in um Dan Juma on loan, Pedro Poro from Sporting, Kudasevsky, and they brought in um Richarlison. So they did buy players. <laughs> so yeah, they did buy players, but for a club like Tottenham, this, it's not like they wait, okay. And this summer, Menor Solomon on what on a free. James Madison from Leicester for 40 million and the goalkeeper Vicario for 16 million. Actually, they bought, they actually made. Um, so, so, Patrick, I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask this question they to you. Money. I'll ask this question to you. Million already this summer. And I, I'll ask this question to you. Do you think, I'm going to ask this like this literally, do you think at 8,000, sure. we're not building a new stadium? They built a new stadium. Remember, they built a whole new stadium. A stadium that I'm going to tomorrow because that stadium holds concerts. 
it has an agreement with other, yeah, it's not just about football yeah. NFL exactly. oh, I, get I don't it. think I, get I don't it. think I our it. new stand is going to be that revolutionary that it's going to like increase our opportunity they built a whole new stadium a state of right. the art stadium I've been there before right. uh, for, to watch a football game I think it's absolutely right. fantastic and right. it's multi-purpose we are building a new stand are you telling me that you think this new stand is going to change Palace 8,000 increase I think it's going to help us in the long said, run. Do you think it's going to change things? It's going to be dramatically different from how, from how it is right now. I think you cannot stand still. You have to do something. So you have to fix the academy. You have to build the new thing. You had to do it. You cannot yeah, stand you have to you do that, but what do you all the time. Yeah, yeah you have so to do it. Do I think it's going what to help you... us in the short term? Absolutely not. I think long term, 100% it will help us. Okay, and long term, how do you see us help? Uh, in terms of scale 1 to 10, how much do you think it will be significant in terms of like... I don't you know, know the scale of one thing. I just know that the increased revenue is going to help us. Now, again, yeah, it will help us. 100%. People, no one's denying that. People in charge have to be... spend the money that they make. They're going to make more money. What they spend or not is a different issue. I don't know about that part. I'm hoping that at that point, Parrish, if he, he's still going to be here, I'm assuming, unless he decides to leave after the stand is built, he's going to decide to spend more money. I don't know that. So it's hard for me to answer that question. But would it help? It can't hurt us to have a new stand. It can't hurt. It cannot hurt. Yeah, it won't hurt us. I'm not saying it will hurt. Right. Well, you can, right. in, in, in a way, it can in the short term. And that could have, a, if, if it means right. you have a limited amount of budget and then you end up budget, getting yeah. rid of it, which I don't think we will, but it yeah, can hurt us stuff, in the short yeah. term. Um, but I think in the long term, 100%, the new stand is the way forward. But my point is, we, we there's always an excuse with Palace. There's always an excuse. Right. Now the excuse is the academy and new stand. What's the excuse going to be next? Because at the end time, of the yeah. day, Harrison Blitz are billionaires billionaires, not millionaires, billionaires. Techstar, clearly he thinks he has the funds to run the football club as well. But there's always there's always a reason. Texas saying, I don't want to do this because of him and Parrish is probably thinking elsewise. My whole point is, this new stand is going to happen. We might have a nice little increase in budget, but I don't think Palace are going to change as a football club. It's going to help us, but I don't think Palace is going to be a whole different football club because of a new stand. Tottenham is different. They're on a different scale. They're a bigger club than us. They can build a new stand, but I'm not getting carried away with all this new stand nonsense as well. I want it to happen, but I'm not going to act like the new stand is going to be absolutely fantastic and everything's going to change at the football club. I think but, what changes at the football club is the people that's making the decisions. If they change, decisions. Right. and if they're all aligned, I think that will change things. I think that the new stand will help the owners. So I think they go, they're linking together. I don't think the new stand will directly change things at, at Palace. Uh, just like with the academy, it depends on your approach to the football club. But right now, I don't care about a new stand. Well, I'm saying this. I do care about a new stand, but I don't care about a new stand in terms of in terms of the context of oh, it's going to make Palace different because I don't think that's going to be the case. I think what's going to make Palace different is if all owners come and be on the same page, which they're not right now. That needs to change. The new stand will help to that, but it's not going to change massively. And I don't think Texas is going to be like overly impressed and say, oh, you know what. You know, spend my money. It's fine. We built a new stand. You can still continue spending my money, but no. Nah, but you know, he'll, I, he'll be gone. Exactly. He'll be gone by then. Exactly. Right? That, but, that, but that's my point. He knows the new stand is being built, but he still doesn't see it as a significant thing in terms of his investment because he wants a bigger say, and that's the bigger but, problem at Palace. But he does say in the article about Parish that he understands that the academy and the stand are important, and he understands that vision. He has. He did say that. So. He may not agree with other yeah. stuff. He wants to have more say, but he does agree with the fact that you have to you have to build that academy. You have to build up the uh, the standard wise long term sustainability. Yeah, you have to, but you have to also work. change your owners, man. I'm sorry, oh, these owners, no, these, no, these, no, these no, four. No, don't be these... sorry because I'm, I'm I'm with you, hundred percent. Yeah, so exactly, well, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything about the stand academy, etc. If if they're not on the same vision. But look, people... Sibs, right there. Your hmm. your 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 um. What do you call that word again? What's your your um? Right. <laughs> You are? No, you are I'm right, just... but I'm saying that's your um that's your um your burner account. account. Yeah, burner account. Your burner account agrees with you, so that's good. Save your burner bro, account. Man, I, the, the, you think I've got time to type, bro? I I I, I said what's on my mind, but that like that's where I stand with it. Look, I don't I, I've seen it. But bro. Jason's right about this. Um about Jason's right about this, and that this is something that he'll never live down. He'll never live this down. Parish said he will push him to be top ten and hasn't so bought any players. So I hasn't bought hasn't bought any players. After saying that, so hard to believe him. Listen, Jason, you're you know what? Right. You know what I was thinking That's as well today. Point. You know what I was thinking as well today. They could potentially make us eat our words in terms of Parish might do this signing as a response to what Texas said, because in a way he did pra he did praise him, but he also said a lot of things about Parish as well, which clearly shows they're not on the same same wavelength. So Parish might have a, like a point to prove to Texas about this whole situation, right?
Um, I, ho I hope you're right. I don't have any faith in the ability to buy players at this point. I hope you're right. Again, I I'm resigned to the fact this is where we are, this is what we are. I don't think Parachis is buying any players to change the narrative for him, for most of our fans, as far as where he is and where the club is. I mean, I've, I've heard there's a lot of negativity going around. You know, I don't, there wasn't a lot of activity. There was no, by the way, at, in, at the game, sat with a lot, I sat with the Palace fans, many United fans, by the way, were, were outstanding with the smoke and the flags. They were insane. So shout out to the Millenarios fans. But there was no negativity at the game, really, about Parish. We talked about, we people talked about the, the team and were happy to be there, but I didn't hear a lot of negativity. So people always say, you know, well, social media is one thing, real life is something different. Maybe there isn't, maybe there isn't any outrage at the, you know, in with people go to the games. I don't know. I don't know. But you're right, D, something has to change. I agree. I mean, this can't be, this can't, this can't keep happening because. So as a fan. I, I don't see As a fan, I want, I want to see, I want us to have the best stadium, of course. I want us to have the best academy facilities. Of course, I want that. But the most important thing is I want us to have a project, which I feel like we did have in Vieira's first season. And now that project has disappeared. Now, oh, let me yeah. ask this. What is, what is our project that. right now? What is our project right now? That's my whole point. Like, we do, is, is our project a new main stand and an academy? I think you can make the argument that's our project. No, but... it, it, this is the project that Paris sees. This is the project that Jason said, the top 10. I'm not buying that. You're not buying it. But that's the project in, in his mind is to be top 10. Even the manager, isn't the manager say that too? Hodgson did say about top 10. I mean. Yeah, he did. That's what he they're saying twice. in public. That's what they're saying in public. So, <sighs> But I mean. Whether yeah, we it's... Just, we get, attain, attain, attaining that is a lot more difficult than saying it but you can say it all you want but attaining that goal with our current squad you said yesterday you went you you broke it down great yesterday man as far as our squad and I was there to watch I saw we started Gyro and who I love um Lerma and he was in the midfield and I was like wow and that first half we couldn't create a single chance and I said okay no problem who we got on the bench you change it the Korean Eze yeah Eze created a chance but even that was because besides Eze you, you said yesterday, we have no creativity. Or we have players that can do things, but not on that level. Whereas before we had, you know, Eze Olise, Zaha. And so I fear for the fact that without creativity in that squad, it's going to be a struggle this year. And I saw it up, up close. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be difficult to watch. Because it was hard to watch the points on, on a... What day is it? God, I'm losing track of the days. On Wednesday. I'm, I'm Friday, yeah. On Wednesday, so... I hope I'm wrong. I'd love to be. I'd love, again, I said it already. I'm already, by the way, I'm already not going to worry about bashing Hudson or Parrish anymore. I'm, I'm good. I'm cool with the whatever. But I'm just saying, it's going to be, I want to, I really want to come on that first game and say, oh man, what a great win against Sheffield United. Team came out firing up. How great was the Hamada? How great was Eze? Edouard was fire. Oh man, those two goals are great. That defense was brilliant. But I'm worried, man. We are, we are painfully thin at so many spots, bro. Fullbacks, weak, weak. Outside midfielders or wingers, what you call weak. So our our spine is good. Goalkeeper, center halves, midfield, fine. But the around that squad, man, there's a lot lot to be done. Barring like some miracle where all of a sudden Edward steps up. Uh, I'm not gonna say Ahmed. It's not fair to put that pressure on him. Uh, Mitchell and Ward play out of the skin the entire season. Do you know what I mean? But when he plays that. Have been sketchy time. to be like on point for 38 matches. That's a lot to ask for, with, man. With no I injuries, hope I'm wrong. Yeah. Huh? Uh, especially injury. We've got three creative right. players. Right. I mean, right. With, uh, yeah. And one of them is injured already. Right in front of me. He he doesn't, injured. That doesn't look good. We've I got Eze. Right. He was right in front of me. He doesn't look yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm talking about our creative players. Right. Like, right. Right. right now, the problem right. is we got we got three. Arguably, put our armor there as well to spice things up. You put him in there. Yeah. So Armada uh, one's injured and Elise. Yeah, Armada, and, and Elise, Eze. and Eze. If Eze gets right. injured, we're fucked. There, there's no, there's no way of putting it around it. And the fact is, even with Eze, right now we don't even have the players to finish the chances that's created in the first. That he's he going to create exactly. So and it's a lot of pressure. You know what? It's unfair pressure because you know, you know, people talk about how Vieira didn't play in last year. I can go back and you'll you'll be honest. You you and I both said Eze's not playing, didn't play well today. That's why he got subbed up a half. I think he it's not from, yeah, from Vieira, though. But how right. can, how can but I understand I understand that. I understand that. But my point is, is a possibility that Eze could return. And then what happened? Well, Roy got the best out of him. I don't know if... Right. Uh, I understand that. that. I understand that. But what if he does... He, he got the best out of him because at least... Oh, yeah. Saying you're saying what if he did you know return? 
Well, I why? don't know what if he, he would have. Yeah, well, he played a massive part because remember Zaha was Bro, out injured. I as know well. that, but what? But let's just say as they revert to type last year and doesn't produce, it's possible. Oh, then we're finished. And that's what I'm trying to say to you. We are I'm not finished. wishing on him. I'm not wishing. I'm not wishing it on on any yeah, of us. If he goes out form if he goes out right. of form, then I mean, what other hope have we got? At least, well, at least he's out him. injured. He's going to come no. back. Maybe him, but I mean, we're running on thin you know, numbers. I'm, I'm, being, I'm being unfair because we have this. Red's right. <laughs> we got, yeah, we got don't, uh, worry. don't worry. I mean, Red, you know what? Red, you, you're spot on because I'm actually a big IU fan. I'm trying not to be sarcastic, but yeah, we got IU, so there's always that. Yeah, exactly. This, this season is. And then Jason, man. You know what? Jason, you're right. As a. Out, we are in major trouble without Zaha. People, I mean, that Zaha thing, man. Whoa, people want to say, Oh, you know what? People, that is a massive uh, loss, man. I mean, that's a week where we can't almost. And I want to bring up, you know, something back. And I know it, it touches the you know, you know, to the core, but we're losing Zaha, man. Even even to Galatasaray, it's gonna be massive, man. It's massive, it's a massive loss. People don't understand. That's your first warning, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Timo Warners yeah, and you're out. Strike out. You're out of this channel with Timo Warners. If you mention that name again, that team's name. Patrick is 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 saying what if like under Zaha if he played bad with what went. That's like I mean we always used to say no, that no, but then, no, no, hold up. Game. We, we, okay, right, so. no, but Zaha we can make the argument he didn't have the greatest of season, but we we had the we had the answer to that because it was Eze and it was Elise. But now you lose Zaha, you have Eze and Elise. So if Eze plays bad, it's a what if. And the whole pressure well, just goes on Elise. Right yeah, we're running out of these creative players. So when you have Zaha, so if, if Zaha was still at the club, the what if would be, if Eze doesn't play well, then who would it be? Then we could say, oh, Zaha can take the slack and Elise. But now, because we lost Wilf, it's a case of we're running on thin numbers. If one of them plays bad now between Eze and Elise, it's, it, it has to be the other one. So it, there, there's more pressure on the other player now. Whereas before we had, you know, a few more other players. Well, but Zaha again, we added to the fold. Jason, man, nails it. We got Schluppy, 20 goal season coming in. So there's that. I mean, maybe, that's looking the positive, man. Gotta be positive. Well, look, people, we're gonna wrap it up now because I need to go to the gym. I need to have food. Um, I'm tired as well. But you know, if you have just joined us now, if you have enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and sus subscribe, people, um, and let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll be honest, I said it yesterday as well. The reason why I'm doing this right now is is the fact that you know, I've been trying to stay consistent, but with Palace, things are so dire. They're so dire. Maybe if we sign a player, things can get a bit more positive. But it's just it's frustrating right now. And today, John Tixer comes out and says, well, I want the club to run like this. And if it ain't running like this, then I might be out. And the question is, can you really blame him? I don't know. You can pick sides here and there. But there's more division. There is more division. Um, I think based on today, people are more siding with Texas or Parish. So that doesn't help that situation. And it's another week gone by where Wilf is not at the club. We won't be coming to the club 100%. And we still haven't got a replacement. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating times. But if you have enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe. Um, hopefully, you will have a good night. Tomorrow, it'll be a bit difficult for me to do Palace news because I'll be out. And honestly, the last thing on my mind is to talk about Palace right now. <laughs> and I doubt there'll be anything significant. So, I'm happy that takes actually, actually spoke out and it came out today. Because if it was tomorrow, then I would be frustrated. Uh, but look. I think it'll be slow weekend. Patrick, are you expecting anything? I mean, maybe Franco, but you know, no. honestly, I don't know. I mean, yeah. Palace played? No, no, nothing. I'm expecting yeah, us exactly. to play um to play Sevilla on Sunday. So I'm yeah, 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 yeah. So that'll be interesting yeah. as well. And maybe um we can get uh Patrick's vlog out um during the weekend as well. So that'll be that'll be good as well. But look, that's it for me, people, and Patrick. And until next time, up the palace.